We're going to take some time to ask Pat some of the email questions that you've sent in. And Pat, this first one comes from Linda, who says, Is it wrong to go to the casino once in a while? I know other couples take dance lessons, they drink socially, etc., but we don't. We just play the penny machines and stay to ourselves. Just need some guidance here. All right, look, uh, I don't see anything wrong with uh, going to the casino uh, as such, but look, keep in mind that gambling is a terrible addiction, and the people who are hooked on it, are, they're destroying their lives. And the whole thing that's wrong with gambling is you're tempting God. You're saying, I'm putting $1,000 on the line that I'll pull to an inside straight, or I'll get a flush, or I can get another uh, ace, or whatever, or I'm going to pull that handle and it'll come down. If all you're doing is you've got a couple of bucks and you just want to have some fun, I don't see anything wrong with it. But keep in mind your your example might what it'll do to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you ask, is it wrong to go to the casino? But once you begin to get hooked on gambling and you begin to think it's a way of making money, then you're in serious trouble. That's the problem, okay? Okay, this is Roxanne who says, there's a company in Wisconsin that is microchipping their employees. Is this the start of the cashless society? Shouldn't we get the word out that this is not a good thing and not to take it? Your thoughts, please. Um, well, you know, the Bible says the time will come, the so-called Antichrist and the false prophet, that uh, everybody will have a mark on their hand or on their forehead, and uh, they can't buy or sell without that mark. And, you know, we have now tattoos and so forth and microchips that you can put in that have all your medical record, all your financial record, everything about you. And uh, I, I think it's not a good thing. You know, we look at Big Brother will control society. How does he do it? That's one way it will be done. I don't think it's a good thing. I wouldn't want a company with sticking something in my hand that says everything about me, all my medical records. All you got to do is go through a scanner. But uh, they think, well, it's convenient. Of course it's convenient. But uh, I, I, th I like having cash. I, I think the <laughs> idea that there's some big computer can wipe out your wealth, I mean, that there's some serious things happening in our society. And uh, this tendency, it's always, let's do it so much easier. Everything's more convenient. Easier, you know. faster, right. It, faster, more mm -hmm. convenient, but you can give up a lot of your liberty. Okay. okay. This is Robert, who says, My wife of 41 years passed this last January. During the last five years of her life, her sister was staying with us to help care for her. The two of us have grown closer since my wife's passing. We've been together now for several months and have decided to marry. My question is this, are we committing some moral sin in God's eyes, breaking any biblical laws? Will we burn in hell for all eternity? <laughs> and am I disrespecting my deceased wife? Wow. I think your deceased wife would be thrilled that her husband she loves has found happiness. She's dead. She's going to be with Jesus. She's having the joy with the angels. So why should she want you to live single and be miserable? Um, there's, once your spouse dies, you are free to get remarried under any interpretation of the Bible. And if you found a mate, obviously her sister reminds you of her. I, I think what you're doing is saying, I love my wife so much, and her sister is kind of like a mirror image. But if you found a soulmate that you can finish out the last years of your life, by all means, do it. Okay, this is Elizabeth who says, how do the Ten Commandments affect born-again Christians? Were they only written for the Jewish people? What do I say to Seventh-day Adventists who insist that we should keep the Sabbath on Saturday? Oh, well, the principle, I, I wrote a book about the Ten Commandments, and they do have eternal values for us today. But what is the value? You know, remember the Sabbath and keep it mm -hmm. holy. Of course, on six days, God labored. On the seventh, he rested, and therefore we honor him. The whole principle of that is that you would have a day of rest, one out of seven, that you wouldn't work, that you would be able to have recreation, that you could have a day to worship him, and so forth. That's what it's all about. You know, the uh, Muslims, what I'm, I'm trying to think, who's got Friday? The, the Muslims. <laughs> Muslims have Friday, Everybody's the Jews Sunday, have Saturday, yeah. and the Christians, Christians have, have Sunday. Sunday. And uh, it's a question of you take one day out of the week. Can you imagine what it would be like if you had to work seven days a week and the next seven and another seven and another seven? You'd go out of your mind. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. 
But the principles about honoring your parents, about not stealing, about protecting people's uh, reputations, don't bear false witness. It's all in there, and it's all important. Uh, absolutely. It, this is timeless for everybody. Okay, this is Deborah who says, Would God ever tell a man who has become wealthy at the expense of his wife and five children to leave all his money to ministries, to neglect his sick wife and force her to live in filth with no water half the time, and to lie to her, telling her there is no money? My dad is doing this to my mother so he can leave his millions to ministries. I don't believe God would tell a man this. He watches your show all the time. <clears throat> I do wish you'd address this. Well, the Bible says if a man will not look after his own, he's worse than an unbeliever. And you, he's worse than an infidel. I mean, you have to look after your own family, your own children, your own wife. You can't put them in poverty and say, well, I'm giving to God. You remember Jesus talking about the ones who said, well, what's supposed to be yours is Corbin that is, is given in a pledge, and therefore you, you, you frustrate the Word of God? Uh, by all means, give to ministries, but don't neglect your loved ones who are your primary responsibility.